Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Down Under Call for the 1st of February. This evening, we have the lovely Holly from all the way from the UK coming to talk to us about um, what she's doing, and she's going to answer your questions as well. So, it's all yours, Holly. Welcome. Oh, gosh. Hi. Hello. What would you like me to talk about, Robbie? Um, we'll just give a brief um, overview of what you're doing to start with, and then... Um, we can get answer questions. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, so I use or I'm using the um, all the knowledge that we've got access to, um, to and I've built over the last eighteen months um, a social media business. So I'm creating an income. Hang on. Can we ask everyone to mute themselves out? Ah, right, okay. I thought it was some random pommy interference that was coming across. So, yeah, so I've used the education that we've got to create um, a separate business that's actually nothing to do with affiliate marketing at all, but it's using all the tools that we've got access to um, to create that. So, yeah, I'm kind of doing something a little bit different to the usual SFM stuff, but my intention is to come back to that once I'm positioned higher. But at the yep. minute, it's not. Um, we all know that you've got to, it's time or money, isn't it, to, um, that you've got to invest into this to be able to create the, the sales and all that kind of thing. Well, I didn't have the access to the money for various different reasons. Um, so I, and I'm too impatient to play the long game in with time. So I thought, right, I'll just make some money somewhere else. So um, what level are you at? Pardon? What level are you positioned at? Ele well, I'm not elite now, actually. I let that go. I'm back. I'm essential. That's oh, all right. I yeah. am. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, I'll let elite go cause until I'm positioning higher. Then I'll, I'll come back to that. Cool. So, yeah, it's very fun. So what are you what are you using what what are you doing to um, get the income from other means? So the so your social media business that well it's primarily social media business. Um, I do anything digital really. So anything that we we learn in here, building websites. I do that a lot. I really enjoy building websites. I do that for businesses. So small, well I'm saying small, local businesses around where I live, and I also build. Um, compliant SFM websites as well, if anybody uh, just putting that out there. Um, and I also, off the back of the website stuff with the businesses, I build, I, um, do, build funnels and email marketing campaigns and things like that. So it's everything that we learn in here, I'm just selling outside in the real world um, and making an income that way. And it's going, I've been doing that for about a year now, just over a year. But for the last 12 months, I've, I've got quite comfortable with the income because I've replaced the income that um, I did. I don't, do, do people know what my story is, how I came into this? Because that would... Well, yeah, enlighten us. I don't, yeah, probably right, okay. not everyone does. Right, it made more sense why yeah. the things I'm saying. So I'll just do it briefly because I feel like I talk about this all the time. Um, so back in almost two years ago now, so 2016, my son, who was then eight, was diagnosed with cancer. Um, and I had, I was a recruitment manager at the time, literally working round the clock, 24 hours a day, single mum and only source of income. So once Joshua was obviously on this cancer journey, I couldn't do the job that I was doing before. So my only income source suddenly went literally overnight. Um, so that's how I came into it, which is why I needed to make, I needed to create an income fairly quickly to replace the income that I'd suddenly lost. But, and it needed to be, um, I needed to be able to do it on my time because we were in and out of hospital lots. Um, think I couldn't plan further than like the next hour ahead. So I needed something that, um, I could do on my time, not somebody else's schedule. So this was ticking all the boxes, um, the SFM stuff. And um, so that's how I got 
how I started with the income was suddenly gone, which is why I needed to start replacing this income fairly quickly by using the skills that I've learned. So that was a, the initial situation, if you like. Um, so yeah, and then last year, treatment finished and things at the uh, September 2016 and 2017, I'd kind of got comfortable because I'd replaced the income that I'd lost by, from my other job. Um, and I was, it's, yeah, I just kind of not really pushed it any further, but I decided because I got like pulled my finger out and my head out of my backside in October, November time and thought, right, I need to deal with quite a lot of other stuff, mindset stuff that I didn't even realize I had. So I spent a few months doing that with a view and a plan that I am doing now is at 2018. I really need to scale this social media or this digital business stuff so that I can um, get positioned higher to start well not I say start living the life I want to live I actually live the life that I want to live now which is we always like living in future space where oh I can only live this life when I'm black and earning I don't know 50 grand a month off, <laughs> which is a load of nonsense but yeah so I've got um yeah, so the plans for this year are to, to really scale what I'm doing outside of the SFM, which will then lead me nicely back into the SFM and do both alongside each other. Therefore, creating two income streams. Yeah, yeah. Well, I want more. Yeah, I've got another. I, I play around with crypto as well a little bit. So I want... I want more income streams because, yeah, I talk about this bench moment. I was sat outside the hospital on one of Joshua's surgeries. And I sat outside on, uh, sat on his bench and I just suddenly, this guilt just overcame me, thinking I'm sat there worrying about money and where am I gonna find money from and blah, blah, blah. And my son is on, laid out unconscious, having, um, I don't know what I was having at that time. Oh yeah, I do, he was having a, um, a podcast put in. And, I, and he's in surgery and I'm worrying about money. I thought, God, I can never, ever feel like this again because I'd been, I'd, I was in a situation where my only income source had gone through totally unexpected uh, circumstances and I just never, ever want to be in that situation again. So yeah, multiple income streams for me is so important because, uh, yeah, if one goes, then that's totally fine because I'll just get another one or have others to, to back me up. So yeah, multiple income streams is a big thing for me as well now, which I'm sure it is for everyone. Cool. Does um, anyone have any questions that they would like to ha ask? Unmute yourself and... Um... Hey, Holly. Um, I just want to say, first of all, sorry that you had to go through that with your son. I couldn't imagine going through anything like that with my kids. That would be devastating. Mm. Um, so he's all good now? Uh, yeah, tr well, treatment's finished. That finished just over a year ago. And we've got all the lovely long-term side effects of all the treatment that they had that we're now dealing with. So it's a never-ending journey, is this cancer journey. But shit happens and you've got to deal with it. So yeah that's the way i look at it and yeah. it could have been a very different story but we're lucky yeah. very lucky but thank you um so i just wanted to ask when when you first started and you were learning everything in the back office yeah did you just focus on what learning one platform first because like in such a short time Yes. Well, what, what did you do when you first started? I went through all the modules, um, as everyone does. Um, yeah, I went through all the modules. I did start doing a bit of advertising, actually, for SFM. Um, but then I quickly realised that I'm throwing money into something that I'm just not going to get the return for. So I stopped that um, late, that autumn... Well, it'd be spring for you guys, 2016. So about, yeah, October, November time, 2016, I stopped putting any money into it because I just thought, this is ridiculous. I'm putting all this money into it and I'm just, I may as well throw it away. But I learned a lot during that time as well. So yeah, I just went through the modules and then um, 
found that I'd always, I've been interested in social media. I really enjoy social media. I'd done a small course the year before because I, I hated my job anyway. Um, and I was trying to find a way out the year before all this, so in 2015. So I thought, right, social media, as long as I'm on a laptop. So I'd done a bit, I'd learned a bit about it before. Um, never done anything with it though. I just sat on the knowledge and never really did anything with it. I didn't, it, it was a whole self-belief thing and all that kind of thing. But so I'd got an interest in that. So I just went, I, I went a little bit further down the rabbit hole for social media and just learned and made sure that my social media knowledge and skills were really um, up to date because it changes so fast. So a year, even though I learned quite a lot the year before, it's constantly it's changing daily, weekly. Uh, yeah, I just found the one, of, one thing that I really enjoyed doing, naturally just followed that. I didn't set out and think, right, this is, I'm just going to do social media. It's just where I naturally fell to. But the website thing as well, that was... Um, I'd never done anything like that before, but when I was building my website for SFM, I really enjoyed doing it. So I was doing a more and then a few more and then a few more. And I've, I've got different websites for, cause I'm, um, Joshua's got a website, well, he's got a website, he's got a Facebook thing, profile page and a website that goes along with that for his, um, his journey, but that's turning into something else now. I'll be setting a charity up later this year, but an edu about education around it. But that aside, so I've built quite a few websites and I just really enjoyed it. So, and once you've built one website, you can build another and build another and build another. There's, it's just going through the modules, finding something that the things that I enjoyed doing, and then just follow yeah. those a little bit further. There's some stuff yeah. in there that I really, that don't interest, like the, all the blogging stuff. I hate writing. I'm really not interested in that. So there's absolutely no way on this planet that I would ever follow anything down the writing route. But you could do that if you wanted to. I, I could sell that. That's what I'm doing, yeah. Oh, is it? Oh, God, no. Oh. Yeah, yeah. But, I really, but I really enjoy it. But I find, like, I um, was blogging today and it was, uh, it was really time consuming and so I didn't really have much time for anything else but some are, some are really quick um, yeah. but others just take a lot longer yeah so, um, yeah so different I, elements that you could in, in what we learn so blog as I said blog it writing that's another skill that you could sell to other people but it's just not something that and if that's something you enjoy doing then follow yeah, that i don't know if it's any good <laughs> <laughs> i could just be writing a whole heap of crap and like you're not being a bit more, just go follow down if that's something you want to do just follow the training path down that avenue and see where that brings you to yeah well uh, eventually i'd like you know, once I start generating leads and stuff, I don't want to be like have it, having to blog so much, but I'm just, I'm going down the unpaid marketing way because I don't have the budget either. So, yeah, um, yeah I've just, um, I do have, I did have a website made up for me, but I've just wrote actually the About Me page today. Um, so I'm going to work on that. And Angie also said, um, uh, who is it? Angie, Gigi, and Alex have do a a training on building your own website. So I'm going to get yeah. onto that, and I'm going to you know learn that process, and then maybe just focus on Facebook, or Instagram, or one of the social media. Yeah, so I just, I just keep learning the training because I just like you. I want to build up my skills. I want to get all those skills under my belt, but. Yeah, just time. It'll take time, but I'll get there. Yeah, don't, I wouldn't say you don't need to learn, be an expert on everything if that's what you want to. If you wanted to use these skills outside of the SFM to create a, um, a budget, you don't need to be an expert on everything. Just pick one thing and, for, and master that rather than trying to master yeah. everything. That's just, you're going to be. Right. Yeah. 
I just haven't worked out which one because there's so many. Yeah. <laughs> just keep trying. See which, stay curious, as Taylor would say. Stay curious and see yeah. where your instinct is telling you to, to go. Yeah. Yeah, good advice. And I can see how you don't, know, you don't need to know, you know, going, how you're getting there because your journey is just flowed and it's it's brought you to where you are today just by doing yeah, what you love it didn't um the flowing bit i had i had massive blockers last um it was last october in fact it was when we were in the cottage i had uh, a bit of a meltdown and it was only at that point that because I th things weren't flowing up until that point. I got it to a point, it, it was a fight or flight thing initially. So I, it was, got to that stage where I had to make this income because mine had gone. And it was just, I could see it. I, I could see it with my eyes, but I just didn't get it. That as soon as I reached the level of income that I, I was replacing, nothing else happened. So I'd got this belief in my head subconsciously that that's as, that was where I needed to get to and I didn't really do anything else after it. And I was so negative on myself. I didn't give myself any credit for anything. I was just like, oh, I can't do this, can't do that. I'm skin, can't, I can't do things like that. All these people that are, can just go to black and get this budget. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what you do if there's a gun to your head, which I'll tell you what, if someone says that to me again, I'll point the gun around and point it to their head because I'm so sick of hearing it. <laughs> yeah. It, the circumstances, no one knows anybody else's circumstances. And um, yes, we can all get that money. And I absolutely believe and know now that we can all get that money. It's just how long it takes us to get that money um, to do what we're wanting to do. Hence this other route that I'm, that, um, yeah, I'm now on. But and it was only in October, at the end of October, when I had this bit of a, a meltdown that I needed to have because then I just I stopped focusing on anything to do with business and just I was peeling lies constantly off me. Um, and there was lots of ugly crying and lots of journaling and lots of um, really frank and authentic conversations with people who were just calling me out on everything. And um, yeah, that was an interesting few weeks as we were going through that, but it was the trigger that I needed to get out of my own way to actually start making this happen. And as soon as I, I did that, so that was, um, in fact, I can remember it was four o'clock on Saturday, the 21st of October. That's when this, the trigger was. That's how important it is in my head that, that I can define when it was. And after that, so I did all, I was doing all this work on myself and reading loads of books and all that kind of stuff. And the, I could tell a difference. I could just feel this weight being lifted off my shoulders of me getting out of my own way. And I could see all these opportunities that I'd never really seen before because I was stuck in the mindset of, um, well, I can't just get that money. Uh, or I was stuck with this belief that I didn't even realise I had that I'm earning what I used to earn, therefore that I'm where I need to be without even thinking further ahead that actually there's so much more that I can give to the world and the life that I can create for my kids and all that. But um, yeah, so when that, as soon as I started shifting my mindset out of where I was and I could see all this stuff and everything since then, it's just start falling into place. And I say falling into place loosely because it doesn't just fall into place. There's got, you've got to, um, do stuff. I've been sat manifesting all sorts of different things, but it's happening like within by the fourth of January. The stuff that I'd put in play, the the plans that I'd put, or like the goals that I'd set for, I've broken it all down for the year, the months, and then like stages throughout the month. By the fourth of January, I'd hit nearly all of January's goals. Because, uh, it's because, and I firmly think, believe that it's because I've done all this stuff beforehand to get out of my own way. Yeah. And the what is just a byproduct of everything else. So the, the social media stuff to me is just a, a, t 
tool for everything else. I don't know if that makes sense. It makes sense in my head in that, um, <laughs> yeah, the social media, why I focus on that is the leverage and the difference it can make to other people's lives. And I think I'm coming at it from a total different angle. Whereas before I was in total scarcity mode. I'm like, ah, what if, what if this happens? What if, um, it all goes tomorrow and what if I totally run out of money and all this scare, this total scarcity mindset. But as soon as I dropped that, um, yeah, it, everything totally changed and things are happening now. And it's just even stuff that even three months ago, I wouldn't believe I could do. Wow. Do it awesome. now. But it's, this is why I go, I rant all the time, the passionate rants. I don't ever do it like with a wiggly finger, but it's, it, even just going back a few months ago, looking to, I don't even recognize the person that I was on. In fact, I was only watching this morning, considering sharing, when I had my meltdown in Ashby, when uh, Team Super Cool and some sauce, which FYI grants are much better than the McDingo burger and fries. <laughs> <laughs> you, were, you were going all right until just now, Holly. Say what? what I said you were going all right till just now. <laughs> Origin. Origin. <laughs> um, yeah, it was when we were sat there and I'd got, we'd got all these, we were filming and we'd got all these cameras set up everywhere. And I'd set my phone up to film as just like a behind the scenes type thing rather than all these fancy cameras that Alex and Dave and whoever else had brought cameras down with. Um, and I've listened, I've watched, watched it back this morning and I've listened to the whole, inter like it was like half an hour I was doing my recording and the stuff I was saying after every answer, I was like, that was shit. That was shit. Cause in my head, I'm telling myself that what I'm saying isn't good enough for, oh, it's a load of shit basically. Um, but yeah, when I was listening to the meltdown, uh, that I had, I thought, I don't even, I don't recognise that person. I mean, it was as though I was sat watching a total stranger. I didn't recognise that person at all compared to what I see and what I feel of myself now. So it just shows that anyone can get over themselves and do and create whatever it is. It's just, it's, it's here. This is where the issue is. There's a million opportunities to make the money we all want to make. Uh, but whether it's I've no budget, whether it's um, I'm not positioned high enough, whatever excuse that we're telling ourselves. And I say excuse um, intentionally because when I used to hear that word excuse, like, well, I'm not making excuses. These are all valid reasons. And I'd pull out all these cards that I've got, you know, cancer card, single mum card, all this kind of stuff. I was pulling these excuses out, which are all excuses now after, now I'm at the other side. It's easier for me, it's easy for me to say this now, but when you're in the situation that I was in a few months back, you're just like, yeah. oh, shut up talking because you're just not in the mindset or the, the frame to, uh, to listen to that. But once, you, once, you, or once I'm now at the other side, I'm like, oh, who is that person? You mood hoover, but yeah, it's so possible to do it as soon as we get this started. That was a really big rant there. Sorry, I just I go off on tangents and just blah, 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 all the time. So, but it's sorry, all good. Yeah. Um, Holly, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you so much for this. This is awesome. Yeah. I've got a lot of time for you. I've only met you once, but yeah, yeah. Um, I absolutely, yeah. really, genuinely love your story. Um especially after even just listening to it right now. I've seen a lot of members and apps and stuff yeah, even just going yeah, through yeah. our funnel um, that have just been so frightened of this idea of the money and, and not being able to position high enough and all that and just just gone. And in all honesty, had we have not been able to just jump in and, and go black like we have, I honestly don't think I would have gone to the effort for SFM at all, which is just a totally wrong mindset, but it's taken us like, I, I sort of had that mentality where it's just like, yes, yeah, we, um, we can do this, just pay the money and turn up and it'll just start working out for us. And of course we had yeah. to go through that whole thing to get into the right mindset to be even near close to getting any results. So what you're doing now with everything 
um, you know, with the with where, you, where you're positioned and whatnot and going to the massive effort that you are to get to, um, to get to where you want to be, you know, whether you're talking about positioning or whatever. Um, I just wish I could show some of, you know, not just our members or our maps, uh, our apps, but even just anyone coming through this funnel that's scared by that. I wish I could show them what you're ta- talking to us about right now. Um, I think it's really inspiring. So thank you. I've never been to, um, into the Hollis Club thing. Just anybody who wants to put things in there, I'll just keep ranting on in there yeah. and um, documenting what I'm doing. But if you want me to speak to anybody, to that I know um, Gav's mentioned of some of his people that is like, oh, well, I've told them about you and your story. If they want to speak to you, are you happy? So yeah, I'm quite happy to speak to anybody because it's so... Um, this is why I get really um, hyper and uh, just rant about everything because, oh God, the if I can shorten somebody's realisation about everything that I've realised over the time that I've been in here by a conversation or by just ranting on about what I do rant about, then absolutely I'm going to do that because I never, ever want anybody else to feel the way that I felt when I was sat on that bench getting choked up thinking about it again um and that's what fires what I'm doing now is that I just do not want anyone to have that feeling um so yeah I'll speak to everybody and don't let that that people think that money is an obstacle because money's been an issue for me all my life looking back and now it's money's not an I don't see money as an issue at all it's um and I don't have any more money than I had when I was in that mindset but it's just that again the mindset of it money flows and we don't need to be scared of it it's it's just it's a, a, a source of energy that just flows around and should be flowing around in fact I heard a really good analogy the other day and I don't know where it was I think it was on I don't know where it was, but anyway, it was something to the SFM. And they were talking about, um, imagine money as being a lake and or in a dam. And if it can't flow out of that, then it goes stagnant and you get all the um, blue-green algae and all that kind of stuff. Whereas if when water's flowing, everything works. So that's, and I thought, oh, that's a really good analogy there, that if you've just got this money or this, that's sat there and you're holding on to it because you don't spend it because you think that you're not going to get any more then you're not going to get any more so yeah as soon as I've shifted that mindset now it's um literally overnight this is the as soon as the mindset shifted it's overnight that everything's just started changing but I didn't see that this is you don't see it until you're not in it I thought I had a really good mindset um, I do, well, I'm not scared of money, I'm not scared of failing, I'm not scared of this, I'm not scared of that. Yeah, I'm well, totally scared about all of it. So, yeah, so if I can help just shift some, or shorten somebody's journey, even by a day for them feeling how they might be feeling, then that's, that's what I want to do. Yeah, that's amazing. That's so good. Um, yeah, um, we, we've kind of probably not in the same way that you have, but we've kind of gone through a bit of a similar, uh, I guess a, a bit of a similar realization, even just recently, this idea of being totally scared of, of losing because when you're going forward, when you are moving forward, all you can think about is what you're losing. You don't, you, you don't really have any, I guess, understanding of the things that you're gaining because you haven't like seen them physically yet. Yeah. And yeah, I think the way you described that just then was really, really good. Um, I actually did have a question um, regarding website building and stuff like that. Yeah. Got a second. Um, what, so like we noticed too, probably the biggest issue and looking back on our journey, especially at the beginning, probably the biggest issue for us was the website and understanding what the hell is an authority site, what the hell is a marketing site, what's this link generator, all this crap. Yeah. Like that was probably one of the most confusing things for us and we're noticing that a lot with our members coming through yeah um and i'd absolutely love to like if they weren't willing to build a website themselves um i'd really love to refer them through to someone like you who who would be interested in doing that sort of thing so you actually do that you were saying 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've built yeah. quite a few SFM websites now and it's, um, I actually prefer building them to building business ones, uh, like outside business ones, because I know the diff I know the impact that that website will have on so many different people rather than building a website for a physiotherapist. I'm sure yeah, it yeah. Can obviously help a lot of people as well, yeah. but yeah. I just know the impact that these SFM websites like, oh, yes, let's get built, get that out there, start marketing that, get people to your message as quick as possible. So yeah, yeah. absolutely something my way. Wow, that's great. Yeah, that's actually a really good way to look at it as well. Um, what's your, just like, what's like are you like more optimized press divi what's your sort of preference i love optimized press for That's the good. do uh, are you a op as well yeah hell yeah optimized and press. it yeah. makes it really difficult and like i don't really have anything against divi it's just i don't really understand it that well because we've always just done optimized press but it makes it really difficult when we've got members who are who are like full-blown optimized uh divi and asking us questions yeah. it's like kind of hard sometimes yeah so like, i if we're, going to get someone to, if we're going to get someone to be building like websites or referring people to get someone to build websites for them, if it's optimized press, it's heaps better. Heaps yeah. Better. Well, I've worked with both Divi and optimized press and optimized press just outshines Divi a million fold um, yeah, I agree. to build its functionality. And then also when I hand that back over to somebody else, it's so much easier for a, uh, for somebody to, to grab because they're going to need to be tweaks further down the line yeah, 100%. Um, and it's so much easier for people to do that who weren't involved in it in the first place but yeah i just think optimized press is is an all-around winner i love it that's good it's a conversation that, and kelly will remember this that we had a lot at coffs harbor around all this sort of stuff and yeah. um like i know amy's pretty big on pretty big on optimized press as well so um, I think in the weekend, Nadine and both Ben set up their set up started setting up their websites. They both signed up to Optimize Press, which was probably just because of the influence of the people that were around. Because we were, we were all just saying, just go and get goddamn Optimize Press. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah, I yeah. I um, just I really like everything that Optimize Press can do. Far yeah. far more than Well, we'll um. Obviously, once we sort of figure this out a little bit more, I'll probably get in contact with you and see if you're still interested down the line. Yeah, sure. No props. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm just going to plug my laptop in because I've just noticed it's flashing. So does anyone else have any questions? Um, yeah, I've got one, sort of one. I was um, I'm really keen on your mindset stuff that you went through because I. I um I personally think for me in my journey I'm I'm at a stage where I think I'm not the right mindset I think that's what's stopping me and holding me back. So what you said you read lots of books and stuff and I mean I've been reading lots of books and listening to audio books. Um, but you were talking about people calling you out on stuff. Was that yeah. SFM people or was that your friends or or yeah, SFM people who are also my best friends. So Team Super Cool McCarthy Sauce. It was them every day. We're in a group chat that is uh, that's hot from the time the first person wakes up to the time the last person goes to bed. We're on it all day, just just chatting about most of the time nothing to do with business. We're just chatting about all sorts of different things. Um, yeah. But in that, uh, uh, so we've got the, a really good, really um, a really special relationship between all of us. That's that's so powerful because you can. Um, we can be really honest with each other as, as we're going through these uh, through the day and the chats and somebody might put a comment um, or answer a question in, in a certain way and other people will pick up on what you're not saying in that message and they'll so, either pick the phone up and call like I've had people that will immediately pick the phone up and call me and say what's, what's this about what's going on that you're not saying or why are you thinking that? Oh, that's a lot of, I just noticed there's a little one here, so I won't swear. Um, B. Um, so, is it, yeah, yeah, it's just people calling you out on things that you're saying, or the way that you're saying it, or what you're not saying, um, or if your actions don't match what you are saying, it's, there's... Um, that's a true mastermind. 
Yeah, and it's, it's, I mean, Grant you, and Kelly, were you there at the weekend? Did I see you there as well? Yeah, so you guys will really, I'm, I'm sure you'll form a similar kind of thing as um, what we did, that McCawson's did and what we've built on that. I'm hoping to, I'm hoping to, because a lot of people missed out. Yeah. So because it was Australia, it was Australia Day week, long weekend. So a lot of people uh, already had stuff organised and planned and stuff. So we've got um, one this Saturday, this this Sunday in Sydney. We've got to catch up. Um, so that might be might be good. But um, did you stop everything and then just work on your mindset? Because I feel yeah. like I need to just stop everything. Because it feels even what you said about what's coming out of your mouth and. And how you, you know, things that you're not saying. And I guess I'm finding that even through the 90 day challenge. Um, yeah. You know, I'm about 73 and I haven't missed, I haven't missed a day, 73 days. And wow. uh, I'm thinking that maybe videos aren't my thing. Uh, <laughs> I don't get a lot of reaction or a lot of people commenting on. So it's either people are picking up on my mindset or my, my, my tone or whatever it be, or it might just get missed. I don't know. You know, I wouldn't even worry about comments or people interacting with your videos. Do it for you. Well, the biggest thing I found when I, I've just finished the uh, 90 day challenge, well, I'm saying just um, a couple of weeks ago now. Um, and it's the third time that I've started the video challenge, but the other two times I'd never got past 38. Or, yeah, one was 36 and one was 38, I think. And this one is the only time I've got through it. But Again, my mindset was totally different this time. I was doing, I was doing it almost to um, document my journey for me so that I can, first of all, do the basics of what, what you need to do to do a video. I was in, where I, to look into the camera, into the lens, not look like now I'm talking to you, so I'm not looking in the camera. Um, just the basics of video stuff. But then, I quickly, as soon as I've stopped the whole ego, it's the ego thing you see, as soon as it's like, oh, when you said that nobody's commenting, well, who needs to comment for you to be successful? Which, to quote, who's that? Is that a JJ thing? How much do I need to earn for you to be successful or whatever he says? But yes, Jasmine Wolf. Is it Wolf? Yeah. All ah, right, okay. Um, which I really like that because then I've, it takes the ownership back on, or it took the ownership back to me that, for, with everything, because I'd say this to myself all the time. So don't worry about people, <laughs> whether you're getting the engagement or not, just do it for you so that you, and you get, and the stuff that you talk about, if it's a mindset thing that you're thinking about, then the stuff that you're talking about, you'll, once you say it out loud, it's very different to saying it in your head. So you might view it a little bit differently. So I just take it as though you're doing that challenge for yourself, not for anybody else, not to give content or um, value, which you, everyone always gives value, even when they say that think they're not giving value. They're giving some kind of value. There were so many days that I turned up to that challenge. I'm like, I've got nothing to say. Yeah, oh, it's definitely an ego thing, and I've just got to get past that. I think that's my. Yeah, it's hard. It's so hard when you when you're in, or when I was in a similar mindset to that. It's so hard to break out of it, and the, it just needs to be one trigger at some point. Mm. It's going to kick you into the onto the path that will help you to do that. Mm. But just don't. I'm saying I don't. I'm telling you what to do. But for me, looking back. If I'd have, there were so many points where I could have stopped doing what I was doing, so many hurdles that would have been so much easier for me to just say, no, I can't do this. I don't mean in the video, well, in the video challenge as well, but um, with it, like when I, um, the biggest, I'll tell you the biggest mindset shift that I, or that cemented it all was when I jumped on a plane to Perth with 20 hours notice and I just, I thought, if I don't do this, I'm not going to step up anywhere else. I had to do that. And I had every reason not to get on that plane. I didn't have, didn't have the money. I didn't have the money to be able to, um, for the plane. I've got, I've got two kids. What are they going to do? What are they going to think? 
Um, I'd got nowhere to stay when I was over there. Well, I did because I just stayed with the, the guys in the house, but I had no, nothing pre planned. Or I didn't have a ticket. There was so many different. My passport, I had an issue with my passport. There was one plane between the day that I booked it to the day of Momentum Day um, that would get me there in time because it's a 24 hour. Jen, so there's every reason for me to not do that and I thought I've got to do this because that will just kick down and fly everything out which it did that was the whole mindset thing and I was I, when I was doing it I was crying I spent all day crying I was sending video messages of me crying to some of the McCarsons who were already over there like Cordelia and Dan and um, Alex and I'm trying to think who else was there so I'm crying on the phone to them lot I'm crying on the phone to the people who are still in England because I've got this issue with my passport that turned out not even to be an issue. Um, I was being sick. I was so scared. I've never traveled. I travel quite a lot as in on planes and things, but I've never done it by myself. I've never been to Australia. I've never had to get any connecting flights. So I was just like all panic and think, oh, what about to lose my luggage? What about to do this? And all this chatter that was going on in my head. But I thought, if I don't do that, I'm not going to get over myself. So that was, um, yeah, that was a massive defining moment for me for where just my mind switched. Mm. And the belief from there was like, I can do this. I can go to Australia for the weekend. Everyone else <laughs> thought I was crazy. But now I'm doing this. I'm, but I'd made all these scenarios. In my head. I literally picked the kids up from school. I booked it at two o'clock in the afternoon. I was picking the kids up at quarter to three. Well, my daughter was picking her up at quarter to three. I'm thinking, how the chuff do I tell the kids that tomorrow I'm going to Australia tomorrow? And so I'd made all these stories up in my head of how they're going to react and oh, they're going to be so mad at me and all this kind of stuff. Am I abandoning my kids to go off to Australia and all this? But they were more annoyed that they weren't coming with me than they were annoyed that I was, <laughs> that I was going. <laughs> so yeah, that's the, so the, it was a massive thing that there's no way old Holly would have done that ever. I would just would not have done that ever. In fact, Susan, I remember your story about going to Perth and that was like a, a really inspiring as well. I would, listening to that a while back um but yeah doing something big that's like so crazy and hairily audacious that there's no way you would ever do it but do it and then all of a sudden the world is just your oyster that's cheesy but it's it, you can do you just realize that there's the only thing that's stopping you is me the only thing that would have stopped me getting on that plane was this mm. And because I had no other excuse, I was out of excuses. It was only me that was that was doing it. So yeah, find something that you really would never do and go do that, and see how your mindset shifts. Okay, all right, thanks. Cool. I have something to say, Holly. I'm listening, Susan. <laughs> Perth was a challenge. Mm. Brisbane was a challenge. Even getting to Melbourne, and I live like. How uh, two hours away from Melbourne, and the one the reason that was a challenge was because the Friday before I traveled from where I live to Benalla, which is New South Wales border, with one of my brothers, stayed there Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, came home Tuesday, got food poisoning, and Friday. <laughs> So, um, and so by 12 o'clock Friday night, midnight Friday night, I didn't even know if I was going to make the train at four o'clock in the morning. Wow. <laughs> Down there. So yeah, it's a case of, I mean, I'm looking at England today and going, because I know it's, there's all sorts of reasons and excuses, but the primary thing is, and I can't even alter this one, is we've got a family thing that I have to be here for. Yeah. So, you know, you, you start looking at all those times, and even Sydney, I mean, 2014, going in there was fine. And then I saw the people coming, and I'm going, eh, 
and I really, honestly, I wanted to get out of there. And Sandra was like here, and I've come out of the loo and gone, where are all these people? And three females screamed at me, and I'm going, oh, they're looking, they're talking, you know, to Sandra. Good, I'll disappear. No way. She disappeared, and I am. <laughs> so all these things, I'm not really terrific in crowds. I wasn't then, but I've got a lot better. Um, but you were saying about writing, yeah. you know, having to relearn to write. I got a email from a person in England today congratulating me on actually writing something that made sense. Now, that's sarcastic, but it's not meant to be because I would put so much in and throw it all around and it was total mess and it has taken me three and a half years to learn to write. Mm -hmm. And I opened up that email and I went, oh, there's five spelling mistakes. And do you know something? Okay, I'm dyslexic. I laughed because I knew how to fix them. Yeah. And it's those little things that go A, B, C, Z. And you go, hey, I can do that backwards now. Mm. And you move on to the next one. And it's just the same as you're saying. There are so many skills, but... Those are just skills. I'm saying just skills. I mean, they're bloody well important. But it's the skill of understanding who you are, where you are, and where you're going to. And having that vision. When they, when they tell you um, in your plan, you know, your modules to, I don't know, I think it's still in there, to create a business plan. Yeah. And I just take sticky notes to people and say, well, do a seven-year business plan. What? What are you going to do in seven years? And they do the seven-year thing and they go, well, I can get to five years and I'm sitting there smirking and saying, well, that's fine. Oh, hang on, I've got a brilliant idea for seven years' time. I said, great, go write it. And they race down the end of the hall hmm. and st sticky note back and they come back and they say, it might take two or three days. And they come back and they say, I've done it. I said, congratulations. By this time, they know me fairly well. And I turned around and said, nothing, absolutely nothing. And one of these people said, how many years did you actually want me to do? I said, three. You only needed to do a three-year business plan. Why would you get me to do a seven-year one? I said, because you said you couldn't do it. Mm. And yeah. now, a few years later, their seven-year plan is coming into fruition. So you can do whatever it is you see yourself doing. Yeah. Take the tools. They give us the tools. Yeah. Just got to realize them. You're right. The, the skills are the vehicle. It's not oh. the... Um, it, I wasn't clear when I started doing um, after October. Um, I wasn't clear on what my big vision was. I knew there was something out there that I wanted different, um, but I wasn't clear on how I wanted, what the actual vision was, and I changed it. Um, when I've set goals this time, I've changed everything to how I want to feel, not what I want to have. Um, and, it's, so, and I've let go of the process as well, because in my head that, right, so if this is the vision, once I'd figured out what I wanted, long term like the big vision if that's the vision then this is what i need to do to get it and i was so hung up on um the process and the path but as soon as i let go of that then and i was open to moving doing things on a different path or whatever path it was things are showing up the feeling that i want to feel are showing up in ways that i never even imagined imagined um, but again, it was as soon as I'd let go of this thing in my head that this is how it should look. For me to get there, this is what I should be doing. Um, but as soon as I let go of that, this, again, that's when things started showing up and I'm continuing to do that. And I'm, really, I'm very aware now as well. I think that made a big difference. Um, I catch myself thinking like this when I'm thinking, right, no, I need to do, this is what I need to do. I'm like, uh-uh. 
So I'm quickly pulling myself back to thinking, Nader, just set your intention, set your goal, set, visualize the goal, and just let, let life happen in between now and then. And things are just happening so much quicker than a few months back when I was like, had a list of this is what I'm doing and this is what I'm doing and this is what I need to do to get to achieve that. And it's, um, yeah, it's, which again, Dan says this all the time. Um, you can't connect the dots forward. You can only connect the dots backwards. So while I was going through all this process, I didn't realize what it was actually looking like. But now when I look back, I'm like, ah, right. Okay. Yeah. I get that now, but you can't see it at the time. You're just on this random trying to forage your way through things. And it's only when you're at the, I call it the other side. It's, a, it's not job done. This is going to be a continuing work in progress. But now I'm, I'm over that tipping point of um, believing in myself. Then, yeah, you, you can, exactly as you said, Susan, you can do anything that you want in this. It's... Yeah. Uh, prove that you can do things that you thought you never could to yourself, to no one else. There's um, an interesting analogy. There's two things. One is the only, I read it somewhere, but the only big thing in the world that is receding as life goes forward is Niagara Falls. Yeah. It constantly, <laughs> when you look at it, I went, yeah. Okay, so they keep saying, pick yourself up and move forward. Well, okay, I'm not Niagara Falls. I am not receding. I'm going in the flight. But on that, last October, a lady got up in front of a group of people and she was telling the difference between a dream and a vision. And a dream is something you have at night. This is, it, it's not SFM, but it, it'll do for the analogy. Um, the dream is something you, you go to sleep, you have a dream. A vision is something that you see in the daytime. Mm. And I went, oh, yeah. Now, JJ, um, he made a point at the beginning of last year. He said he had trouble writing down his visions. His, his dream points until he drew them and I went well that makes sense because I'm an extremely visual person so I started writing down bits and pieces and it didn't make sense because I couldn't get the connection for the dogs to take to a walk um, so I started drawing it and I drew one that's up on my wall and he, JJ said put three things in it well, the funny thing is everything in the one, two, three of them that I've drawn have now come true. Mm. So, oh, when I, yeah. And then I, I found out about this vision thing. And my vision that I got the other day, you're talking about feeling your vision. I love swimming, but I haven't been able to swim for a while because of a leg injury. So, well, I can rip my leg. But I was just... Two days ago, I had seen myself in a pool, swimming like a dolphin, which I love doing, blowing bubbles and having a lot of fun. I even knew where the pool was. Still don't know who was there with me. I don't even know if there was somebody there with me. But I saw me in that pool. Mm. And I went, oh, yeah. About three hours later, it hit me and I went, everything that I was worried about has now gone everything mm. and I went well now I've just got to think well is Scrooge McDuck diving into the pool <laughs> you know that uh, okay no but I saw bubbles but it <laughs> it helps when you are on JJ and Justin's things and I totally recommend them yeah so, absolutely. That's, me. that's my blurb I'm disappearing I've got impatient dogs, guys. I've got to go because it's like whatever time it is, 10 o'clock here. I've got to do a half-hour walk. And they aren't going to leave me alone. So mm -hmm. thank you for being here. I've got to go. I'll catch you. See you, Susan. See you guys later. See ya. Do we have any, anyone else have questions? Oh, Holly, just, just, oh, sorry, Ange, go. It's all right. 
Um, no, I'll just keep it basic, colleagues. I, you know that I come in onto the group and I do listen into your, um, what's it called, Holly's Club. And if anyone is interested in following Holly on that and doing the social media, is an excellent forum that she's got there. But um, when you actually are doing your um, starting out, because as you know, I said I'm probably going to be going down this route or am going to be going down this route. Anyway, yeah. I, I am still advertising, but I know that I will be going down to do some, get some clients, so to speak. Um, you said you don't like writing, so you're not building content in that way. You're just doing like the advertising and the photos, linking to Facebook and to Aweber. Um, their <laughs> websites. Would I would never. Um, you can create content, as in blog content or. Um, like long text content if you wanted to offer that but firstly I only do things that I enjoy now that's like rule numero uno for me is I don't do anything I don't want to do because I've done that for 35 years and I'm not doing it anymore um but you could but also text isn't it's not really conducive to social media is text anyway it's videos for lots of different reasons so I do do some writing as in a caption content yeah. Grant knows how good I am at that. Don't you, Grant? He's not listening, so he's no idea what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. Not good at captioning. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, you're captioning. <laughs> not bad at all. In fact, we've got a fair few followers on Instagram because of something she tagged me in. I yeah, don't think it's really good. a little entrepreneur related, more gin related. But... <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, there is some writing yeah. involved, but no, no, nothing, I don't do any long text, but a caption things which is fine I'm, I actually enjoy doing that but um, yeah I wouldn't I won't do anything wrong but if that's something you enjoy doing then no all right okay. <laughs> no, I don't enjoy the long writing either I just thought do it for, the, for myself but I don't I wouldn't want to do sort of put someone else's um, out there because yeah. basically they know their business a lot more and their customers or their clients as well much better than I do so to me, they'd be able to sell their story a lot more. Yes, you can do the, the well, line, you can do those tags. <laughs> you need to, when you start working with somebody, you need to really get inside their brain and really yeah. understand the business and their audience. So you would need to have that level of understanding when you're working with somebody. Um, but, and you can do that for captions, but I, I would, I make sure I've got enough knowledge of the business that I could write something longer if I wanted to. But I don't want, I've got even like, my tummy's churning at even the thought of writing something that long. That's how much I hate it. But the option I do have is, um, if no one's ever come to me for this, but if somebody did want me to um, do that kind of content for them, I know a copywriter. So I'll, I will factor that into the budget that, of what I'm, I'm costing for them and get her to do it so it's not that i'm not i'm saying no as in say hello freedom won't do that but it's just i won't do that myself so the options there if somebody wants that i can make that happen but um it won't be me that's doing it yep no, that's good yeah thank you and that's also nice. the bonus of the community yes. there's lots of people yeah. can do lots of things and you can say well yeah can anyone do this for me I'm not yeah. good at it. Yeah. That's negative part. You are, you could be good at it if you chose to, choosing not to. Well, yeah. But like you say, just do the things, <laughs> do the things that you enjoy the most. Yeah, this is it. It's, this a, is it's amazing. Choice. Yeah. So we, we choose yeah. what we want to do. Even when we think that our back's against the wall and that I have no option but to do it because I need this income. You don't, yeah. but every, I say no to things now. People ask me to do things, and I say it's something not all the time, obviously. But if it's not in line with what I'm about, what my values are, and what my vision, if if it's not in line with my um, overall mission and vision, then and my why, then I just say no to things because I don't need to say yes to things that I don't want to say yes to. Oh, that's good. Good to know. Thank you. You're welcome. So Mike, you had uh, a question. 
Yeah, hey everyone. Um, it was a more of a question when you, uh, so I, I think you were just talking about as we came on board, but um, about you were elite and now you've backed off a bit. But I was looking yeah. at, so we're only a few months in and we're at gold, but we're you know still doing some elite stuff. And but what pitfalls? Uh, what what I mean, what are we about to you know? So Facebook videos. Did, did or didn't work? Um, YouTube did or didn't work? What didn't work? But what can we learn from that experience from, that you've been through? Um, what is it? What didn't work on the affiliate route? Yes. Yeah, it all works if you do it. It all works. Uh, it's just that with me not being positioned at the high enough within the DEA, my uh, return, my ROI wouldn't be it wouldn't make sense to be spending the amount of money I would need to spend at the position that I was at to get the um, return on it. So I did just in reverse engineering to work out how many leads I would need to get to be generating the amount of money that I wanted to generate. And it just, the numbers didn't stack up, which they don't stack up, um, which is why I didn't continue with that that way but everything works video YouTube works Facebook works everything works when you're doing it if when you do it it only doesn't work when you stop doing it but I would intentionally stop doing it so that I could take this little bit of a detour to create the budget to be able to position higher and then I'll get back on the affiliate wheel I'm absolutely believe 100% in everything to do with it um, it's just I, I need to create the, oh, and I'm saying I need, I'm choosing to create the budget first because it, it's budget or time to make this work. And I, I, I just, I can't wait for things. I'm too impatient. I want things as quick as I can get them. Um, so, right, fine, I'll take. So for the next three months, I'm not doing anything SFM related. Even I keep, I make sure I'm plugged into the community all the time because that's, worth way more than any return that I'll ever get from any black sales, the people that I'm around now. Um, so I stay plugged into the community, but I'm not doing anything marketing wise at all. Um, and that I'm totally fine with that. Cause to start with, I thought I should be doing this. It's this whole mind games again, that this is what I should be doing. This is what everybody else is doing. And you, you just go down this path of self destruction. Um, but actually, as soon as I took a step back, saying, right now, this is where I want to get to. And this is the path. This is the how I'm going to navigate my way around there quite loosely is to create the budget separately and then plow that back into the SFM. So, um, so is that then that? Um, yeah, so it works. Um, you, sorry, no, I cut you off and just made it choppy at the end, so I'm sorry about that. I think it's probably my end. Um, yeah, whichever path you choose to go down, they all work. Um, you've just got to master it to get it to work. Yeah, yeah. We're we're gold, and I'm. You know, I've, I've done the. You know, ideally would be black um, for the greater return. Uh, and when I'm doing the numbers on gold, I can see. You know, yeah, with budget and time, you can make that work. So I'm just, I'm just thinking yeah, gold, of you know, gold and above. There's no issue with numbers. Mm, that's right. That's ultimately, I probably should have been more direct with my question. That's what I was ultimately getting towards. You know, there's my interpretation of gold and above um, being sort of the benchmark to get to to get the good return. So thanks. That, that's pretty well exactly what I was after. Thanks. Yeah, gold and above. That's what um, is widely spoken yeah. about. Obviously, the higher you are, the greater you're going to get back off that. But it's worth you doing paid advertising from gold upwards. Gotcha. Hey, Kylie, you went you gold, didn't you, just uh, recently I saw? Yeah, I did just um, last week and uh, I have a pretty shitty relationship with money so I was uh, <laughs> I was pretty scared when I went and dumped the, the money that I had on that. So, yeah, I'm a bit... Yeah, well, uh, I know when we were in Perth and you were chatting and you said that's where you wanted to be and that was only, what, two months away. So, uh, well done, you got there. Yeah, I got there. Thanks to my, uh, my <laughs> partner in the Middle East, so <laughs> using her money. 
Oh. And hang on, Holly, are you in are you in the UK at the moment? I am, yeah. We've just come back from spending the last two months there where it's about two degrees. I'm thinking, how can you not be rugged up? Like, <laughs> we were like, oh my oh, God. <laughs> I sit next to a very hot radiator. My heating is up <laughs> 24 hours a day. Oh. So. It's, I might get the sun's out actually now, and uh, but I do sit next to a very warm radiator, so it can be freezing uh, outside. Yeah, I'm walking around in a, a vest. With I a wondered, I'm just like, my God, <laughs> we had to buy uh, jackets over there because, of course, Australian jackets is, are nowhere near thick enough. So, lovely country, but thanks, thanks for sharing. I really appreciate it. Oh, no problem. Um, we're going to London too. I don't know if you knew that. So we'll probably have to catch up with you there, which would be good. And anybody else who's going to London for Momentum Day? I know. I know you're coming. Francesco is. Francesco. Excellent. When do you fly in? Are you there for Platinum as well? Or? Uh, we did We did Platinum in No, not Perth. you. To oh, sorry. <laughs> Francesco. Today, no, I cannot uh, afford platinum at the moment. I would love to. Yeah, so wow, so you're coming for the day. I barely, well. make it, I barely made it to London, to be honest, but I did it. I didn't know how to do it, but I made it happen. It will be so worth it. You will get so much off the back end of, of doing it. I did with Perth. I know. It'll be the platform that you just rock it from. When do you get in, Grant? Are you, when are you flying? Are you two? We're, we're getting in the 21st and we're just hanging about for a few days, just checking out London and we're probably, we're probably hanging around um, the venue a fair bit because there's a couple of people um, that we've got going through Platinum. So we'll probably just be doing a bit of that sort of thing. And then got we've got Momentum Day and then 10 for 10 after that, yeah. So I think, we're in, I think we're in London for about... 10, 12 days or something like that. Oh, wow. Mm, no huge amount of plans, just, just uh, yeah, sort of whatever happens. See what happens. Mm. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Just uh, be ready for the freezingness because it is freezing. Yeah, that's what, they, that's what they'll keep saying. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. It's going to be so good, especially just coming off um, Coffs Harbour. Like any of these meetups with any of these SFM people, like Perth, for us with platinum and then everything that went on there, momentum day and the rest of it. And then of course, what we've just done with um, coughs, like every time you have these meetups, it's just like throws you into another gear as you were just saying. Yeah. It's, it just, um, we, we've got, um, I got, we have a London meetup every month and I make yeah. sure I go down to that because even though the, it's, it's just spending time around people. We're in, there's a Manchester meetup um, on Saturday so I'm really looking forward to that to see people, because there's people there that I've never met before. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to that. And then there's um, a few of us, a table of us, going to the, you know, Victoria's Promise. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they've got the, the Promise Ball on the 10th, so next Saturday. Um, and there's a table of us going down there for that as well. And it's just, I would spend, I, well, I do now, my time is spent, I would rather spend time getting on a train going down to London to be around SFM people, then I would give a Friday night up to spend it in the local bar with one of my friends around here because it's just, yeah, I would just rather just spend time around people like us that just get it and just it's so on our wavelength. Even though we're totally different people, we just there's something that gels us all together and I just that's more important to me the, the money now is a byproduct it's the people that I'm around and the person that I'm becoming that is just it's far more important to me so yeah me mm. to do that it's, it's quite scary how powerful they are even just spending a few hours sat having a drink with a few people it's uh yeah it's crazy you really um you really do lose the fear around meeting new people and all this sort of thing it's more like excitement because you know yeah, you're going to be picking yeah. up like gold nuggets left, right and centre. You're going to be like the interaction within the community is where the growth is, I, I believe. Um, yeah. It's one of the places where the growth is. I actually think doing the work is where the major growth is. And that's definitely what we've found recently. Doing the shit that you don't really want to do, but you really need to do. But 
Second to that, the interaction or even probably nearly on par with that, the interaction within the community um, and the conversations are the thing that really, really, um, they put you in your place. They put you, you know that within this community, every time you're speaking with someone, they're coming from a place of love um, and respect for you. Yeah. And if you can just learn to accept that really well, um, there's so much on offer in every single conversation and every single, single interaction. And especially if you can be doing monthly meetups like organized within the community um, or even like Kelly, like what we did five days away with, with a bunch of people in the same house or whatever, you know, like, or, or going to momentum day or going to a platinum or whatever. Like we've noticed, like I remember our first momentum day, Helena, like, Helena had nothing to do with SFM before that. I just dragged her along to Brisbane and we walked away from Brisbane and Helena's like, right, I'm going to, we're going to sell one of our houses and I'm going to quit my job and we're going to do this full time. <laughs> it went from yeah. zero That's to a hundred percent after one event. Yeah. And that's the effect that these things have on you. And if you've already started to gain a little bit of traction and a bit of momentum, um, you can kind of imagine what an event like that, what effect that it had on you. And I, I can tell you firsthand, it's massive, massive. Yeah, they are. They're still, they're still spe- especially the, um, the, we did five days in Ashby in the cottage, the McCawson's, and that is just on another level again, mm. because you, you're living and breathing with these people that, well, we, ours was five days and it's just, it just gives you that everything as in that you're in this bubble of, these people who just, without even realising it, you're just rising up to to be someone totally different because you just that's what you're around you. You're hearing it, you're living it, you're breathing it. You're sat, everything you do is with these people, and you just the conversations that you're having constantly all day are just yeah, again on a total other level from a meetup. Uh, for an afternoon or whatever. So yeah, anybody else that is, is can get together, do that. Just book a B, uh, Airbnb and spend some, even a weekend together. It'll just catapult everything again. Crazy, crazy. That's what happens. When oh. crazy so true. Um, just on that, I just want to say, yeah, after our meetup in class, like my emotions were just so all over the place. Like I didn't know if I wanted to laugh or cry. I it was just so powerful just being around all these people. It was amazing. It was yeah. awesome. And that's the first event that I've been to. And now I can see the value and what it means, like how everybody's always talking about the community and how important it is. So when you finally get a chance to go to one, it's um, yeah, you should certainly realise the impact it has on you. And most of the time, it's not what happens on stage that um, makes the impact. It's what happens in the conversations that when you're interacting with the community. Yeah, mm-hmm. at these events. I've got to go anyway, so I got to put Indy to bed. Say good night. No. It's like after ten, and it's. Late, and I've got to get up at four thirty. So, thank you, Holly. Um, thanks for your time. Oh, you nice welcome. to meet you. See you guys. Good night, everybody. I'll see, see you. Later. Later. Bye. Does anyone else have any questions? Yes. Rosemary. Yes, I have a question. Go for it. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, I haven't been in the community for that long. I started in September and I haven't achieved anything yet. Um, what I was wondering, it, uh, I'm not that good in English, <laughs> um, is that I don't know if I'm going to do videos or writing. I have started writing something, but then I'm not sure if I should put it in Facebook, on my Facebook page, or should I put it on the landing page, or where should I put it? Um, and then you talked about, Holly, um, 
that you um, stop for a while and uh, just figure out what you were going to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and um, I feel like uh, I do that and think about um, all the, the practical things I have to do within SFM and um, so it gets a bit uh, not overwhelming but um, confused mm. um, at times. Um, so could you just say I want to stop for a while and I just want to figure it out and I just want to know what my business would is going to um, what do you say? Uh, I, I just don't remember the words <laughs> in English. I'm sorry. Um, well, maybe that's my question. What should I do? Should I just keep on writing, put it out there, and see what happens? Or should I just, um, what should I do? Um, I would first of all, I would say get really clear on what what your goals are. Mm. Um, until for me personally, until I'd really I went through all the modules, I'd got the knowledge and the skills, and um, was using them. But until I got really clear on what my goals were or are, then I was just treading water. I was just throwing mud at a wall, hoping or uh, wondering if something's going to stick. Um, and, but as soon as I've set the goal, I'm very intentional now with everything that I do, whether that's in line, in integrity with the end goal. And if it's not, then I won't do it. The filter process of making decisions now is really easy because it's, does this take me a step further to where I want to be or if it's and if it doesn't, then I just don't do it. So I'd get really clear on what it is, where you want to get to. And it's the old thing, it's module two. Everyone skips over module two without really taking the time that it, it deserves. Um, or go back to it. I've been back to module two a lot of times now. In fact, even thinking about my first ideal day that I wrote, and that it's shameful what I was writing in there. It was just the stuff I was writing in there. I was like, oh gosh, who is that person? But go back to that and really get clear on what it is that you're trying to achieve. And then once you've done that, everything else, well, you can just decide to, on yes or no, whether this is something you should be doing or shouldn't be doing based on what you want to achieve and how you want to feel. Okay, thank you. Have you finished the modules? Uh, I no, I have the last one left to do. Okay. Um, yes, I'd say get through those, but don't rush that. Do them properly. There's no. This isn't a race to who can finish five modules the quickest in the world. Do them. Make do them properly and get what you need out of them. And go back and do. I've been back three or four times now to do through the modules, and every time I get something else out of them. But yeah, definitely spend a bit of time back in module two to really get clear on on what you want to achieve. Okay. Everything after that will, fall, it'll, it'll be really easy to decide whether you do it or not. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Um, you're very and welcome. thank you for this, for what you're saying. I, you have been very inspired. Oh, thank you. As long as it <laughs> <helps someone. laughs> Sorry, my English, I just. Your English is fine, so you need to take that out of your head as well. Everyone can understand yes. what you're saying. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. I'm a bit nervous. This is the first time I'm on, ah. on a webinar where I talk. <laughs> That's <laughs> fine. Yeah, so, but it's not your English. Well, <laughs> well done. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Don't make it the last time. No, 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 no. Of course not. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Any last questions? No.
That was a very long pause, Robbie. What are you waiting for well, people to do? <laughs> well, no, I'll, I'll just wait for them to unmute themselves so they might have something to ask. <laughs> you give them the opportunity because sometimes there's a delay as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. True that, true that. Well, if there's no more questions, um, we might call it a night. And um, thanks for coming, Holly. It was awesome having you here. Thanks for asking me. And, uh, yeah, I'll get the recording up over the weekend and um, post it in Down Under and the SFM tribe. No worries. Thank you very much, folks. Thank Lovely you. seeing you all. Thank you. Thanks, Holly. Thank you. Thank See you, you later. Bye. Thanks, Holly. Bye. Bye.